Hey guys, what's up? This is Don and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. And follow me along as we dive into the world of Cinema 4D dynamics. And I'll be showing you how to break any object without the use of any third party plugins. You can do this off the bat uh, right now if you open up your Cinema 4D software. Okay, so this is the, uh, the animation we're going to be trying to recreate. Uh, very simple. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, first of all create a new file and let's create the objects that we need for this. So the first one is the plane. This is the one we're going to be breaking. And let's give it uh, width and height segments of one and one and then change its orientation to positive x like that and let's get a floor we need this to collect up the pieces that get broken and then we'll also get a sphere and this is going to be doing the breaking itself let's give it uh, 16 segments and uh, let's leave the radius at a hundred I am also going to enable uh, the growth shading lines display mode so I can see the edges clearer. Okay, the next thing we can do is to animate the sphere. So let's set a keyframe for the starting position. Uh, maybe move it a bit closer and then go to frame 30 and set another keyframe after it has gone through the object and let's set that keyframe. So this is the animation that we have and when that hits that, that object, we want it to break. Okay. We have the animation now. Now let's do the actual dynamics. Uh, there's a few steps which you have to follow for this. So, first step is to get your plane. Hit C to make it into an editable object, or right-click, make editable, and you can also use this switch right here. All right, let's go to the polygon mode. Right-click and knife, and we're going to add some segments to our plane just cut it up a few times press control a right click subdivide uh, that that was off screen uh, so I'm just gonna bring it up here and hit OK so we have a bunch of segments the next thing you're gonna do is to go to more graph and fracture and then get your plane and make the child of the fracture object what the fracture object does is basically tell dynamics where to cut this uh, geometry apart. So it's going to be where we put those lines in, but dynamics does not know that unless we use a more graph object. In this case, we're using the fracture. So let's go into the fracture and set the mode from straight to explode segments. And that's going to basically split them apart. And uh, what we're going to do now is to enable the dynamics. So we need a dynamic tag on all of these objects. So let's start off with the floor. Right click simulation tags and rigid body. And let's go to our plane. Same thing, rigid body, and we can just copy this to the sphere. And uh, when I hit play, you can see that our sphere just drops to the floor and so it does our plane. We need to disable the dynamics of the sphere because we want it to be rigid so that it hits the plane, but we don't want it to be dynamic so that it's affected by the gravity. So let's uh, switch off uh, dynamics. And when we hit play now, you can see that the sphere still moves and then it just kind of hits the plane and knocks it off screen. So the plane is obviously not breaking apart. So what's missing? Well, if you go to the plane itself, although we did slice it up, it uh, actually didn't separate those segments. They are still connected. So we need to disconnect them. So right click and disconnect. And make sure you untick preserve groups. That way they all become separate. So click OK. And now when I hit play, still the same problem. And this is because of the tag itself, the tag on our fracture. If you go into the collision section, there's this control here called individual elements. And by default, it's set to off. You need to switch that on and put it to all. 
So all the segments now will be individual elements. And when I hit play, you can see that they all break apart, but um, they actually started falling before the sphere even hit them. So we need to fix that as well. But at least we have something. So go to the same tag and go to the dynamics section. And there's a control here called trigger. By default, it's set to immediately. So immediately when we press play, the dynamics are triggered and these objects start behaving uh, as they should. But um, we only want them to be triggered after they get hit by the sphere. So we need to set this from immediately to on collision. So now when I hit play, nothing happens until the sphere hits the whole thing. Okay, now we have the break animation, but you can see that all of our pieces are wafer thin, and that doesn't look very good. So we need to add some depth to this. So go to simulate cloth, cloth nerves, and then drag your fracture object with the plane into the cloth nerves, and then set the subdivisions to zero. And you can adjust the thickness of this now using this uh, control right here. So if I say something like 25, and now I have some depth to those pieces, and it looks a, uh, a lot better, just like that. You can um, you know, add some uh, render settings to this to make it look more appealing. Uh, so if I get a material, I'm just gonna drop it onto all of the objects. And uh, I'm gonna get a light. So I'm gonna go to my content browser. I'm gonna get my ring light from my Cinema 4D light kit, which is uh, available on my personal blog. Okay, let's um, hit render, and you can see that looks, you know, a little better. We have that uh, dark edge in the background. So what I'm gonna do is to insert a background object drop the same material that's on the floor onto this background then right click our floor tags and compositing and you want to take compositing background and that's going to give you an infinite plane look and now you can go ahead and you know add some more effects to this but at least now you have a, a little bit of light and some shadows and uh, that looks awesome so thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.